Hey everyone, welcome back to First Hand Globetrotting. In my past few videos, I've been showing you around the Barcelo Maya Grand. It's a huge, all-inclusive beach resort in the Riviera Maya, Mexico, and has six different hotels. Before I went, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out if I'd like it and how it compared to the other resorts nearby. So, to make it easier for you, I'll show you around the resort so you can figure out if it's the type of place where you want to stay. In this video, I'll talk about the bars and nightlife that they have at the Barcelo Maya. Since people come here for a vacation and are looking to have a good time, this can be a major factor in choosing the right resort. It's all inclusive, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to grab a drink, but it's equally important to see if the atmosphere lines up with what you're looking for. Some people like wild spring break resorts where people are partying all night long, some prefer sipping drinks quietly by the pool, and others like something in between. So hopefully this video will show you what to expect at the resort and if it's the right one for you. But if you're interested in what else a Barcelo Maya has, don't forget to check out the other parts of this series. In part one, I talk about where the resort is, what the different hotels look like, and give you a tour of my room. In part two, I show you the huge pools they have and the seemingly endless sandy beach. In part three, I talk about all the food options, the buffets, beach grills, snack bars, and a la carte restaurants. And in other parts, I show you some of the interesting things at the resort, some of the activities you can do there, and nearby day trips around the Yucatan Peninsula. If you want to check out any of those, links are in the video description. When I went to the Barcelo Maya, I stayed at one of the four entry-level hotels, so that meant I got complete access to all four of those hotels. But I wasn't able to do things at the two higher end hotels, the Palace and Riviera, so I won't be talking too much about those in these videos. If you're staying at those hotels, you'll be able to use all the bars and nightlife spots I'm talking about in this video, so hopefully it will still be useful for you. The Barcelo Maya Grand is an all-inclusive resort, so that means you'll be able to eat and drink as much as you want. This includes all of the house brand beers, wines, liquors, and mixed drinks. They also have some premium brands that you get if you stay in a premium level room or are willing to pay extra for them. So if brands don't matter, your drinks will be free. To start, if you want something to drink, you don't even need to leave your room. Every room has a free mini bar that they restock every day. It's mostly filled with snacks, juices, and non-alcoholic drinks, but they also have a few cans of beer in there. For most of the day, your closest bars are going to be the swim-up bars out by all of the pools. The tropical, colonial, Carib, and beach hotels each have their own, so you're never very far from a drink. If you're hanging out in a lounge chair or a hammock, you can walk over to the dry side of the bars to order a drink. Or, if you're in the water, you can swim up instead. These were super convenient. Since it's an all-inclusive beach resort, relaxing with a drink by the water is definitely the most popular daytime activity. The selection won't be quite as good as the bigger bars at the resort, but they have most popular drinks. They also have servers who will come around and take your order for you in case you're too relaxed to get up. So if the goal of your vacation is to just sip on drinks all day by the water, you'll love the pool bars. If you're out by the pools, another option for drinks is at one of the beach grills. All four of them, Palmeras, El Mariachi, Captain Morgan's, and Rancho Grande, have bars in the center of the restaurants, so you can grab a drink there too. Both the beach grills and the swim-up bars have self-serve beer taps, so you can pour your own without waiting in line. If you're hanging out by the beach, unfortunately there aren't any bars on the beach, but you can bring your drinks over from one of the swim-up bars. If you're looking to get away from the pools or have a drink in the evenings, each of the hotels has its own lobby bar. At the Tropical, theirs is called Tequila Bar. It's open air with a nice big curved bar and seating that spills out of the main area into the nearby walkways. The atmosphere is pretty casual, with artwork that really keeps up with the tequila production theme, big paintings of stills and agave fields. Bar Puebla is Colonial's lobby bar. 
It's an indoor bar, but honestly, I spent most of my time sitting at the tables outside of the main bar. You have a nice fountain in the background, big comfortable chairs, and the open air design gives you a cool evening breeze. The only thing you miss when you sit outside is the live music they sometimes have inside, but you can always go in when that starts. The mall bar is the Caribs Lobby Bar, and it's attached to the Maya Mall. About half of it is a covered open air bar, and the other half is an outdoor area surrounded by water. The central part of the covered area has pretty standard seating around tables, with a lower level that has more relaxed couch seating near the fountains. But my favorite part was the outdoor area with bright, funky chairs out on a little island in the middle of the big fountain pool with a little bridge you can walk across to get there. It's a great place to grab a drink near all of the sights and sounds of the Maya Mall. The lobby bar at the Beach Hotel doesn't have a very original name, it's just called the Beach Bar. The main part of the bar is indoors and enclosed like the Puebla Bar, with a fairly modern design and atmosphere. But just like the Mall Bar, it has an outdoor section that's on its own little island in the middle of a fountain pool with a colorful seating area. I love these outdoor bar areas, they were probably my favorite places to have a nighttime drink at the resort. I've shown you the different bars they have around the resort, but what if you're looking for some evening entertainment? I love the Barcelo Maya, but I'll admit that the nightlife can be a little bit lacking compared to some other all-inclusive resorts. If you're normally in bed before 10pm, it may be enough for you, but if you're hoping to be up late then it might not be quite what you're looking for. One option is to listen to some live music in the lobby bars. Most nights, the Puebla and Beach bars have musicians playing piano inside for about an hour or so. If you're looking for some relaxed music to listen to while you sip your drink, then it's a nice change up from the regular background music they play. The most popular entertainment at the resort are the live shows every night at the two open air theaters. The theater between the tropical and colonial hotels is called Palenque. As you walk up to it, there are some winged serpents guarding the stairs to get in. You'll know you're there when you see the big fountain spraying water out of the ground. It's even easier to see at night since the fountain is nicely lit up with color changing lights so it really sticks out in the darkness. Like almost everything at this resort, the theater is completely open air so the big entryway has the ocean on one side and the live shows on the other. Just inside the main entrance they have a full bar, and then the theater is made up of lounge style seating arranged in different levels so you can find yourself a table to sit at and sip your drink while watching the show. The other theater is a Kukul Khan theater between the Carib and Beach hotels. Keeping with the themes of these hotels, some Mayan statues stand guard outside of the front entrance. Similar to what I showed you in Palenque, Kukul Khan has multi-level lounge style seating and is open on every side, letting in a lot of nice fresh air. I'm not sure what their capacities are, but this one felt like it had a smaller, more compact design. It's nice because no matter where you end up sitting, you're going to be pretty close to the stage and have a good view. They have two bars inside the theater, one on each side of the main entrance, so you're never going to be very far away from a drink during the show. So go grab one before it starts and enjoy the performance. Both theaters have a show each night, but they're at the same time so you'll need to pick which one sounds better to you. I went to as many as I could and I'll show you some of the ones I saw. The first show I went to was the El Divo show, named after the famous vocal group. If you've ever heard their music before, you probably guess that this show is a mixture of different songs featuring male singers. Things like opera ballads, lounge songs, older pop songs from singers like Sinatra, and stuff like that. It's one of the smaller shows I saw, with only the three singers on stage performing their songs for the crowd. It was also one of the most relaxed shows, focusing more on the singers than anything else happening on stage. One of the shows I was most excited for when I saw it on the schedule was The Magic Show. Other than street performers, it was the first time I've ever seen live magic, so I was probably pretty easy for them to impress. But I thought they put on a really fun show, and they seemed to have all of the classic types of tricks that I was expecting. Things like making the magician's assistant disappear in some tricks and reappear out of nowhere in others. 
and the magician channeling his inner Houdini to escape from a tight spot just in the nick of time. And then using some magical levitation skills to make things float around the stage as he worked the crowd. Nothing was too different from tricks I've seen before on TV, but it was still a really fun time and I thought they did a really great job. Oh, and there was one part that wasn't quite magic. It was more of a laser light show where someone was swinging around lightsabers and dancing on a big cube. I guess the lasers were supposed to be the magic in this part, but I'm not really sure. If you're looking for a show that's more on the romantic side, there's the Love Barcelo show. It had some live singers leading the way, a full band backing them up, and then some dancers to go along with all the songs. Some of the music was right out of Hollywood movies, with the dancers doing their best to imitate the actors from the original scenes. And others were more like Vegas lounge shows, with showgirls doing some choreographed dancing behind the singers. And then others were Spanish songs that I don't think I've heard before, but had pairs of dancers moving around the singers. It was a pretty nice combination of popular songs, good singers, and live background dancers and musicians. So, if you like love songs, you'll probably like this show. The Circus Show was another one that I was really excited for, so you can probably see that I'm just a big kid at heart. It's made up of a troupe of performers who each do short acts based on their unique talents. One of the acts was a pair of strongmen who did a human flagpole performance where they hold onto the pole and lift themselves up into seemingly impossible positions. This act got a pretty huge reaction from the crowd, since after being on vacation while eating and drinking everything in sight, I don't think any of us would have had any chance at doing these moves. And, as if the first part wasn't impressive enough, one of them held himself like a flag while the other one stood on top of him. The next performer had a balancing act, where he stood on a little stack of steps that he had to keep balancing on a tube that was sitting on a table and he even added in some juggling while he was up there, as if the rolling and balancing wasn't hard enough. The best way I can describe the next act was a woman who was spinning and juggling with her legs. She had different objects that she'd spin and twirl with her feet as she was laying down on her back. I can't remember ever seeing anything like that before, but I thought it was a pretty fun talent. Personally, I thought this was a really entertaining show. If you like buskers and street performers and acrobats and people with unexpected talents, then this show will probably be a good time for you. Another show with live singers, dancers and musicians is The Variety Show. As the name suggests, this show has a little bit of everything. The singers switch depending on what song it is, with everything from solo artists to duets to big ensembles of singers. Some of them even get off stage and work the crowd as they belt out their songs. The music they were performing was from a bunch of different eras and styles, and the dancers usually had on costumes that matched the time periods. I thought it was a fun, high-energy show with the singers and live bands and costumes and dancing. There was a lot to see. So if you're looking to sit back and listen to a playlist of hit songs throughout the years, you'll probably like this show. One of the audience participation shows is Men vs. Women, where two teams are picked from the crowd and play a few games against each other. It has some trivia, some parts where they run into the crowd to find stuff, and other games like that. Personally, I prefer the scripted shows with the professional performers more than the ones that focus on the audience. But if you want a chance to join in on the excitement or watch other tourists having fun on stage, then you may like this show. If you're a fan of Michael Jackson's music, then you'll definitely want to come and watch his show. It has almost all of his big hits, so you're going to be hearing songs you recognize all night long. But it's not just the music that makes this show great. What I really liked about it was that the Michael Jackson impersonator was going all in with the dance moves and choreography. And, of course, because this is a Michael Jackson show, you know that there'll be some moonwalking across the stage, right? I've shown you a bunch of the shows that I got a chance to see, but there were even more on the schedule that I didn't have a chance to check out. They seem to have a pretty big rotating set of shows that changed every week, so once you get to the resort, you can have a look at the schedule to see which ones are running when you're there. After the shows finish at around 9.30 or 10, things start to quiet down at the resort. 
but if you're not quite ready to call it a night yet, one nightlife option is Jaguars in the Plaza Mexicana. It's a resort's nightclub and usually opens around 11 in case you're looking for some late night music and drinks. I took a look inside on a couple of nights and it was mostly empty, but maybe it'll be a little more lively when you go. And if you're traveling with teenagers, they have one disco club in the Maya Mall so they can have some nightlife of their own. Your other option for late night fun is Stryker's Sports Bar and Bowling Center in the Maya Mall. It's open 24 hours and is air conditioned, so if you want a place to hang out with some late night food and drinks, then this is one of your only options. The front is a sports bar with a bunch of TVs and a small buffet, and then the back has bowling and an arcade and some table games. Don't expect too much from the buffet, but it's nice to have after a few drinks. Most of the bowling and arcade area costs extra, but they can be fun if you're looking to change things up a bit. If you want to keep yourself entertained once most of the resort shuts down, Strikers gives you a nice set of options to have some fun. They have bowling lanes and arcade games and foosball and air hockey and pool tables, and there was even some giant pool tables on the floor if you're looking for something completely different. Or, if you just want to sit down and relax, they have plenty of drinks there and lots of TVs with sports on. So that's it, I've shown you all of the bars and nightlife options at the Barcelo Maya Grand. As you can probably see, you'll never have to walk very far to get yourself a drink while you're here, and since it's all inclusive you can enjoy as many of them as you'd like. They have some fun shows here, but you'll notice that the nightlife options aren't as extensive as at some other resorts, and after the shows, the resort mostly dies down. If you want some more exciting nightlife, you'll need to take a taxi to Playa del Carmen, which is about a 30 minute ride each way. But if you're not looking for anything too intense and are planning to head to bed early so you can spend more time out under the Mexican sun, then it may be enough for you. This video was all about the bars and nightlife, but if you want to learn more about the location, what the hotels look like, and what my room was like, check out part 1 of the video series. In part 2, I take you on a walk down the entire 2 km length of the beach and show you all the pools they have. And in part 3, I talk about food and go through all of the buffets, beach grills, snack bars, and a la carte restaurants that you can choose from. In the next parts, I'm going to show you some of the great amenities the resort has, talk about some of the activities you can do, and show you some of the nearby day trips if you want to get off resort. For any of these videos, look in the video description for links. If you have any questions about the bars, nightlife, or anything else about the Barcelo Maya Grand, ask me in the comments. While you're at it, like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. On Instagram, I'm Firsthand Globe Trotting. On Twitter, I'm Firsthand Globe. Follow me on there. And don't forget, it's an incredible world out there, so pick up your passport and do some first-hand globetrotting of your own.